But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran is mentioned, if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are in there. I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. All right, hello everyone, and peace of the Lord to all of you. Today our topic is very important. I hope people will take notes for what we will teach you. And uh, we will open Skype immediately in case there is a Mohammedan would like to join us. Uh, you know, we welcome always Mohammedans from all kind of uh, Mohammedanism, uh, Shi'anism, Sufism, Sunnism, Druzinism, all kind of nism. All of them, they are useless anyway. And in reality, none of them knows what his religion is, you know, but they have names for it. And having names doesn't make your religion a religion, but eh, it's a title, you hide behind it or under the shade of it. So today our topic uh, about uh, uh, cutting hands. You know, all of us we knew, and there's no question about that, Islam is a religion of mercy. Who of you don't agree? I mean, we have to agree that there is no question about that, that Islam really a religion of mercy. We saw in the news that a Muslim, he chopped the hands of a professor in India for insulting the filthy false prophet Muhammad. And because he chopped the hand of this uh, the person, uh, supposedly now Allah and his prophet are happy and uh, they feel better. <clears throat> and you know, I mentioned when uh, we spoke about this before, that Islam is always, uh, you know, when they ask a big sheikh, he's the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood in the world, Al-Qaradawi, uh, they asked him about using violence. He said, if not the sword, Islam is demolished long time ago. So the whole idea of what they do is to prevent you from exposing how stupid Islam is. And then by preventing you from exposing Islam, Islam will survive. But, you know, if all of us, we insult Muhammad and we expose Muhammad, uh, then the Muslims, they will give up and they will, they will not think about such an act. However, it doesn't matter really how many people insult Muhammad, I will insult Muhammad to the last second in my life. It doesn't matter if I have hands, feet, tongue, I will insult him even in my heart if I have no time to speak. He is the most filthy, scumbag, filthy criminal ever. He's a rapist, child molester, a womanizer. He go even after his own son, wife. And the Muslim, they are so proud about him, they say, if the Prophet's eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her so the Prophet can if her. Excuse my language. That's why I say it. I'm just using the language. Uh, all right. Okay, receiving some messages in Skype. 
We want Muslim to text us, please. This guy, he bought my book and he is saying he is so happy that he is using my book to expose the lies of Islam. And, uh, you know, long story short, uh, I have been using your book, Waking Up Muslims. I have one whom I have heard for three weeks running. He did not seem to be knowledgeable and not sure, right? So, you know, yeah, education is power. You need to know that always. And the Muslims, actually, the Mohammedan, they target the one who they believe is ignorant because this is the only one, uh, you know, they, uh, they can fool. This is the only one they can deceive. Ignorant person. You have to be an ignorant person to be a target. Uh, okay. All right, who actually has received a message from someone? I don't know. I don't know what is that. This person, he is a master of master. Okay. What shaman mean? I need to find out what is this. Okay. Modern version of Isin Mark is practical. Kabbalist working with medicine plant. All right. It will be a feedback from you. Will be interested. I'm glad to share what I know about what happened in this religious war. We were spot on on my thing. Maybe I can add some part <clears throat> to mosaic. All right. Looks like this person, he have some education. You want to share with us. <clears throat> Oh, okay, so he is saying uh, he is uh, he is a Jew. Uh huh. He's a Jew. All right. Well, maybe this is like a text message from yesterday uh, about uh, the war in Ukraine. All right. Well, until now, I didn't see any message from a Muslim. Okay. Yeah, too many messages about the topic yesterday. All right. All right, we go back to our topic. I was trying to read the, uh, those messages, messages to see if there is something really can help us in our topic today, but all of them they are yesterday, about yesterday. Uh, I will show you a story proving to you that Islam is just a, the most stupid cult. Not only it's not merciful, the Muslims they say that Allah He sent Muhammad as a mercy for mankind. That's what they say. But the second you start reading Islam, you know, and you, you, you have knowledge of it, you will notice that Islam not only a very filthy, disgusting, bloody, violent, with no mercy. You see, I'm not against, by the way, violent penalty for a crime no I'm not especially if the crime was itself was violent like somebody killed somebody I believe that the best punishment for somebody who kills somebody is to be killed not to put him in jail for it's not right that there is a human being he is now in the grave and the one who killed him is enjoying life eating and have health insurance and maybe he's watching TV because most of those Western like if you go to Norway, uh, jail is there like it's like a five stars hotels. So I kill like I go shoot a hundred people and then you put me in a room and I have internet, I have computer, I have TV. I mean, what is missing? And I eat nice food and my room is warm. Is that fair? No, this is a stupid point. This is not a penalty. This is loyalty. This is loyalty uh, to the to the criminals, not to the victims. Uh, <clears throat> if we go in the Quran, we will find the Quran something say something very you know very silly. You 
in chapter 21 verse number 107 it says that Allah he sent Muhammad nothing but the mercy for mankind nothing which means the purpose of Muhammad to be sent is to be a mercy this is what it says and I will show you let me clean the screen for you so you can see the screen with me give me a second So based on this, Muhammad is nothing but mercy to all mankind and even jinn. I don't know what Muhammad had to do with the jinn. Look like he's in control of them too. But all of us, we knew that Muslim, they claim that Muhammad was controlled by black magic, which means he was controlled by Satan, which means he was controlled by a genie because the Muslim believe that Satan is a Muslim and he's a genie. As you know, in the Quran, uh, the Quran confirmed that Satan, he believe in Allah and he's a good Muslim. But the only reason he not doing good, because Allah, he appointed him. <clears throat> Which means he is just, he's doing good, he's doing the right job. And his job is to be the enemy of mankind. <clears throat> In chapter 6, verse 112, it says that uh, we have appointed for every prophet enemies, shayateens, satans. Who is the one who appointed the shayateen? Allah. So Allah is the boss of all shaitans in the world. And he gave them uh, duty to do. So like, let us say, uh, you know, you work in a company, you go to the company, uh, in the morning they say to you today you have to do this and this and that this is exactly how Allah he managed his business he have many shaitans they work for him and those shaitans they have a duty to go and mislead everybody including prophets of Allah and here you notice actually the verse saying clearly in chapter 6 112 that Allah appointed To every prophet, Satan's. And here the, the Quran says something very strange. It says Satan from the mankind and jinn. <clears throat> if you ask the Muslims, is Satan is a genie or he is from the mankind? He will say to you right away, uh, you know, jinn. But this verse here says mankind. And they try to give it their own, you know, uh, uh, false fiction interpretation. But the verse is so clear. It is Satan's. He used shayateen. So they are not. Just not like us. And between two brackets, even the Muslim, they make it clear. They say the devils. From among the mankind and jinn. So what this verse is saying to us that shaitan, he can be a human being sent by Allah. He is, he looked like a human being, but he is shaitan. And he is a genie in the same time. But the question why Allah want to send satans to mislead people. You see, it's not satan voluntarily he is doing misleading. It is Allah, you know. In fact, the Quran confirmed that like when shaitan he says to Allah when you mislead me when you deceive me so shaitan saying to Allah you are the one uh, you, you know all those verses say the same by the way like chapter, chapter 7 verse 16 chapter 15 verse number 39 uh, like here as an example, it says, so Iblis said, oh my Lord, so Shaitan is a Muslim. Shaitan, he called Allah, my Lord. Because you mislead me, I shall mislead them too. So who is the true Shaitan? Obviously the true Shaitan is Allah. Shaitan himself in Islam is a Muslim. Allah, he mislead 
Shaitan. So Shaitan can do the work in this part of the verse. He is going to mislead people But yet shaitan is a Muslim and he believes in Allah and he worship Allah. To the point supposedly in the day of judgment, shaitan he would say, I have nothing to do with those people who they may mislead by me, but you are the you are the one who made me mislead them. Going back now to uh the stories of Muhammad. <clears throat> which is about uh, thieves, cutting hands, because this is our topic today. There's a video of Mufti Mink, if you remember, we played it before here. Let me find it. They brought a they brought a thief to the caliphate, and they told uh, the th the thief he told the caliphate because the Muslims, as you see, they believe that Shaitan. Uh, he himself, he have a destiny. Muslim themselves, they have a destiny. And destiny means that everything you do, including rape, killing, theft, uh, crimes, everything is done because Allah, he appointed you to do that. So if we go here, we will find this. This is Mufti Mink speaking. The one who is trying to call me, I will call you back. Give me, give me a few minutes. So this is Mufti Mink. Explain to us a story for a man, his hand should be cut off for he is a thief. Listen carefully. Be the fool. A man came at the time of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, according to one of the uh, narrations, uh, he, had, he needed to be punished because he stole. So he comes to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu and he uses the same line. He says, oh Umar, oh Amirul Mu'mineen, how can you punish me for having stolen when it was predestined? My deeds were already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's quite a good argument if you were to look at it. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was one. See so what he said? He said this is a good argument if you want to look at it. He didn't say this is foolishness. This is a good argument. Why you are you going to punish me if what I did is a destiny? The so-called Sheikh Mink, he agreed. He said, this is a good argument. But look how the response of the Caliphate, because Islam is devilish. It's about playing games. He could not refute the argument of the man, which is proving Islam to be invalid, stupid cult. Why I will be punished for being a thief if this is was destiny? And as you see, it's a good argument, which means he's right. His argument is a right argument. It's a very good argument. The caliphate could not refute him. What he said, listen carefully. Oh, Amirul Mu'mineen, how can you punish me for having stolen when it was predestined? My deeds were already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's quite a good argument if you were to look at it. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was one ahead of this man. He says, well, let's punish this man because it was predestined that we were going to punish him as well. Oh, look at this intelligence. See how smart the caliphate? You see the game of, of, of sickness? So now he will cut the hands of the person even though he knew the argument is right. If it is destiny, which means I cannot change it, Allah, he made me a thief. Why you are punishing me? The caliphate, he said, well, Allah, he destiny me to cut your hands. And then we need to ask ourselves, what kind of God he deceived shaitan? Shaitan deceived people. People believe it is destiny. 
which means they have no choice to do or not to do. And then they will be punished. And the one who punish you, it's a destiny too that he will punish you. So the one who killed, it's a destiny. The one who was killed is a destiny. The one who punished, punished the killer, it was a destiny. This is how stupid this garbage cult is. Let us see the one who is trying to call. Uh, yeah, focus with me, focus with you guys with the topic. Those who they are texting me in Skype, we have a topic. <laughs> Yeah, we will answer those questions at, after we finish this topic. Let's see. Somebody tried to call me. I will mute uh, the speaker until until they answer. <laughs> I'm calling the person. Hello? It says connection is weak. Okay. Call later. All right. Let us call one more time. <laughs> Yes, uh, you are live on air. Hello? I hear you. Go ahead. You are live on air. Uh, yeah, hello? Do you hear me? Yeah, do you hear me? All right, you are live on air. Go ahead. What do you want to say to us? Uh, not sure if you can hear me properly. I hear you very fine. No worry. Okay, great. Uh, good evening. Um, I know it's a bit off topic. Uh, uh, and if you don't mind, uh, uh, could I ask some questions that I um, I have a bit since a bit since a while? All right. Yeah. Um, Sorry. No problem. Go ahead. I'm listening. I'm waiting for you. So I'm. Um, sorry, just a sec. I've been um, uh, listening to you and uh, trying to you and other people out there um, for a while and uh, I have a couple of questions regarding I mean if, if, if I'm calling clearly I have my doubts all right <laughs> but I have some a couple of questions so you, so you are a, you are a Muslim uh, I was born and raised in a Muslim family all right yeah. Don't be mm, nervous. Um, Relax. Don't be nervous. You know, we, I'm here to help you. There's no need to be nervous. Uh, relax. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I just, um, I'd like to understand, for instance, uh, if, uh, you know, for some crazy reason, it's, a cult or it's you know whatever you um, you you might define it um, there are some things for instance growing up my my, my parents uh, well I guess as the majority of uh, people they were taught about uh, this religion because 
uh, from what they were told from their parents and I mean at least from my side my parents before moving to Europe uh, they didn't study they weren't scholarized so they believe what they would thought they they were taught and um and i was taught so from them i didn't had a bit the opportunity to you know go to a arab school even though i'm arab i understand a bit but not much or to study in islam in in an arab country so what i know it's what i was told and i i have those uh, points that I, my mom, she would always, um, you know, remind me of how uh, Miraculous is uh, the book by stating, for instance, um, topics related to embryology. Um, um, I don't, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, uh, really uh, I studied economics I didn't study at all the science but uh, those are things that for instance out of curiosity you know I wanted to check up and I uh, listening to you a couple of times I know people already made this point um, so I went through it and um, you um, pointed out that uh, in the verse, um, you know, Quran 22.5, um, there is the point where it says clean, cleansing cloth. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, I understand that uh, this can be both uh, coagulated blood Mm-hmm. Uh, when you look at the Oxford Dictionary, mm-hmm. but it also says material stuck together, or of material stuck together, and that kind of tells me, well, maybe this is what is meant. Okay. All right. So, uh, can I call you a sister, even though you are not a Christian? Is that okay? Of course, it's okay. All right. Thank you very much. So, you know, uh, Oxford Dictionary is not really an Arabic dictionary. This is, you know, this is what the Western learn from the Arab. The Arab told them, and who is the Arab? The Muslims who they offend in Islam. But all of us, we knew that the word uh, alaqa is a dead blood. And that's why even the Muslim, they say, uh, they say that in their translation, which usually Muslim don't say because Muslim, they try uh, to hide it. As long as you said your parents are Arab, alaqa is simply the one with the same way I say alaqa. It is, it is a blood when you injured, let us say you have injury in your uh, foot or your leg or your hand or anywhere. Then after some time you will have a blood covering the, the injury, correct? Yeah. And that is good to be there because that will stop the bleeding until the skin is healed and then that thing will fill, up, fill down, correct? Yeah. That is the alaqa. <clears throat> Same time, let us say for the sake of argument, uh, this is not what uh, the Quran meant. Let us say it was saying something stuck together, but there's nothing in the baby made <laughs> of something stuck together. Because as you see, it says we made the sperm, the sperm, mm-hmm. because this is a, this is appearing in the Quran many times, not only in chapter 22, verse number uh, 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 14, uh, this is mentioned many times uh, about the Nutfa and how the Nutfa, uh, like the same uh, chapter 23, verse number 14, it's a shorter version of the same verse. It says, we made the Nutfa into a clot. Okay. So what is the Nutfa? It is a semen, mm-hmm. correct? Um, uh, the, the translation here, it says semen. Semen. But semen is the semen mm-hmm. of the man, correct? Yeah. Okay. But the semen of the man never transformed to anything like that. Uh, I am assuming that you went to school, right? Yeah. All right. So when we go to school, what we learn that uh, the semen go uh, to the women egg and do the fertilizing. Correct? Yeah. Okay. So 
is the semen become something or the semen just fertilize and deliver the DNA and then the egg is going to grow? It is the egg. Yeah. There is no egg here. So this is number one mistake. And here it says that the semen become a clot, not the semen made a clot. No, the semen become a clot. And then the clot become a lump. And then the lump become a flesh. So all of those, they were what? Semen. So based on the Quran, the semen is the one who become a baby. And this is absolutely very false. In the top of that, you know, who knows what the Quran is saying better than Muhammad? What do you think? Your mom, yeah. me, or Muhammad? For sure Muhammad, right? Yeah. So if we go now to what Muhammad said, we will find this. Let us go to what Muhammad said. You can see my screen or you cannot? Uh, I believe it's... I see the picture of uh, Mufti Mank. Oh, okay, it's going to refresh for you. Okay. So if we go to the Hadith, trying to understand uh, what Muhammad is talking about. We will find Muhammad give us details and those details will clear everything, every doubt about what uh, what's happening. Read with me. I don't know if you can see the screen now. Um, one second. There is a lot going on. All right. I will read until you... Uh, let me know when you see it. I will read okay. it for you. Um, when, um, when the yeah, drop okay. of semen remains in the womb for 40 or 45 nights. You know, you can go right now and search on Google, you will find that semen cannot even live more than five days inside the women. And the semen does not mm -hmm. go to the womb. Semen don't go to the womb. You know? Yeah. And it says here that semen is the one remain in the womb for 40 days or, or 45 nights. The angels and come, in fact, here translation is false because the, art, the angel, he come to the semen. So he's standing now in front of the semen inside the, the womb and he asks Allah, is bad or good? So here we see the first mistake Muhammad making that semen, according to him, taught by Allah, stay inside the womb for 40 to 50 days to, to 45 days or night. Uh, inside the womb and that is obviously something Muhammad received from his God because Muhammad he is not speaking from his own as as you know Muslim they claim that Muhammad he is a person who do not know how to write how to read right and he's yeah. talking now about God the creation so everything he here you know he's talking about angel and what angels say so uh, if you read this this is Sahih Muslim Allah the exalted and I can give you the link if you want. Uh, so you can have reference to, you can show it to your mom. Let me give it to you in the uh, in the chat. I just gave you the link, you can open it from your side. So Allah the Exalted, the Glorious, has appointed an angel as the uh, caretaker of the womb. And he would say, my Lord, I, uh, it, it, is an, uh, it is now a drop of semen. Oh my Lord, it is a clot of blood. Do you see it? Yeah. Who's talking? Uh, Muhammad. Yeah. Okay. Was Muhammad wrong? If Muhammad was wrong, then Muhammad is not a prophet. Either Muhammad is fabricating something claiming that he learned from Allah or this is the truth and then he says here so now it become a, a clot blood a clot oh my lord now it become a lump now it became a flesh of a flesh and then when Allah decide he gave the final shape the angels say oh my lord would it be a male or a female which is false because the gender happened in a very early stage for the baby not at, and not the last thing right so everything is wrong and is it me who is explaining the Quran now or, or this is Muhammad <laughs> so it can't be true correct what do you think and this is Sahih this is very authentic they can't say to you this is weak this is uh, daif you know this is Muhammad himself speaking and this is his explanation um, 
And if the explanation of Muhammad is wrong, well then, who is the one who can explain the Quran? And how Muhammad is in the Prophet then? So we showed you what the Quran is saying, and we showed you what Muhammad is saying. So now Muhammad is confirming what is in the Quran. So what do you think, uh, my sister? Do you think Muhammad really is still a prophet? No, I um, you have been listening to you for quite a long and <laughs> I'm here to help you and I I understand that you are struggling. Uh, and I'm just being very honest with you about what's, you know, I, I, I'm not saying anything. I, it's in the front of you on the screen. This is their, this is a Muslim website. This is not even my translation. So how any, any Muslim can deny that, you know? And I understand your struggle because you grew up in a Muslim family and your parents, they told you how amazing. Look, give me, give me something else your mom, she told you about the miraculous thing in the Quran. There's something else? Something about the <sighs> sorry, no, more. it's okay, it's okay. I understand. I uh, had you are like my little sister, because... consider, consider, consider me your other brother, and I'm here. I will have all the time for you until even if we, if we speak for four hours, don't worry, take your time. Something about the, the, the depth of uh, somewhere. In the sea, where, where? Uh, it's about what? Something about the deepest point in the sea, or oh, okay, this one. Okay, you know, I, I want to teach you something. All right, I want to teach you how to, to to understand anything you read, not only the Quran. And you gave me this example now about the deep sea. Hmm. I noticed that all people, not only. I mean, you or your mom, and everybody, when they read, they don't really focus, uh, you know, uh, in, in the reading carefully. They don't even read. I don't know. I mean, there is, there, is a, there, is a, there is a reading, and there is a person who is, let us say, uh, understanding. So when they speak about... Uh, 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 you know about the waves and the ocean and how the Quran knew that uh, uh, you know uh, how the Quran knew this a long time ago. You will find in two seconds that this is this is absolutely a mistake, and the Quran doesn't say that. If we go here, let us see. <clears throat> And the verse you are talking about, about I to confirm, this is chapter 24, verse number 40, correct? It says, uh, You know, the state of uh, disbeliever is like the darkness in a wet deep sea, overwhelmed with the great waves, topped by great waves, topped by dark clouds, darkness on above each other. Is that the one, right? Yeah, this is the only one in the Quran speaking about the darkness in the sea. It was something about the Romans and they... Oh, but this is a different one. But you mentioned to me a second, This is uh, you mentioned about the... I thought you mentioned about the dark, the dark sea. The deepest uh, point of on earth. Ah, uh, 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 that is the other one. Okay, let me explain this one and we will go to that one. All right, yes. here you see the Muslim, they claim here, how the Quran knew that the ocean is down deep. The, the fact there is nowhere it's mentioned that. It says that uh, there is a crazy uh, 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 waves going one after one, and there's dark cloud, and that's why the water is dark. So this is not about the sea itself. This is about, this is why it's called, what, what the cloud have to do with the deep sea? 
Like if we have a cloud, that will make the sea, deep sea, will, will make it dark? No. So this is a false interpretation, they give it to you. Now we go to the lowest uh, uh, point in the earth. <clears throat> uh, let us see here. In chapter 30, it says, uh, verse number two, the Roman has been defeated in the nearer yeah. land, okay? And they will be defeated and will be victorious. Uh, okay. Uh, let us see here. Okay. You see the translation here? It says, Adna al-Ard is not about the lowest land. It's about the land is near. So the Roman now they are fighting in Jerusalem. Uh, nearer, not yeah. deepest. It's not deepest. However, if even if we say that this is false, because the Roman they did not have their war in the you know in the Dead Sea, they were having their war in Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is way higher than the sea. It's not down the sea. So in the nearer sea, you can go right now and check what the Roman battles they have and which one, why why, why the kuffar they are making fun of Muhammad? Because Muhammad, he claimed now at this point that he is a, he, is, he, he, he believed that the Christians are from his religion too, which is false because we don't worship Allah and he's a pagan. Suddenly he is a proud about the Roman. I thought the Roman, the Muslim, they go and they vote them and they fought them and they, you know, because they are kuffar. But here there's a contradiction. Here the Roman, Allah himself, don't worry, the Roman will be victorious. And then it says that the one, they will be victorious and then the believers will be uh, happy. Okay, who is the believers then? Why the, why the believers will be? And here you will see, this is the Roman against the Persian. Correct? Yeah. Number one, this is a false victory because the Roman, they did not become victorious until many years after. Because... If this has happened in the time of Badr, as Muslims uh, they say, it took long, it took the Roman many years after to finish the war with the Persian. Plus, it says here within three to nine years. If we go in the Hadith, we will find this: that this verse revealed to Muhammad after the Roman become victorious. It says Abu Sa'id narrated that on the day of Badr, the Roman had victory over the Persian. So the believer were pleased with that. And then the following was revealed. The Muslim, they say this is a prophecy of Prophet Muhammad that the Roman will be victorious after a few years. But as you see, the prophecy happened after the victory happened. How that can be? Imagine I say to you, tomorrow you will pass the exam, but you passed the exam a week ago. <laughs> you know, so there is many mistakes here in the verse and they lie when they speak about the, the lowest part of the earth. But as long as you are speaking about Muhammad uh, prophesying, well, here we go. Muhammad, he prophesied that the Roman before the day of judgment, they will become the majority of mankind. Mm -hmm. If you go right now and search on Google, <laughs> Uh, you will find that the Roman number is shrinking fast, uh, which means the Italian. And Italy now, they are... St you live in Italy? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, the, uh, you know then that in the number of population in Italy is declining very bad, very bad correct? Yeah. Okay. So, how Muhammad here, he say that the judgment day will come and the Roman are the majority of mankind. Do you see the reference? Mm -hmm. Is the Roman is the majority? <laughs> the Roman they are not even in the size of, of a of a city in China. How they are the majority? So this is a false prophecy about the Roman. The smart Muhammad and they try to say to you, oh, this is he meant the Christians, but the Christians are not the Roman. That you know what? Okay, uh, there is there is uh, the Coptic, there is African, there is I mean what, what Roman? 
There is Indian, there is a Christian, Christianity spread everywhere since the beginning of the time. In fact, there is many Christians, they become Christians before the Roman even, as you know, that the Roman as an empire become a Christian 300 years after Jesus. So 300 years before the Roman become a Christian, there is many people from any many ethnic groups, like the Ethiopian, like the Indian, like Syrian, like, like, like all of those, they become Christians already, and they have nothing to do with the Roman. So how the Roman they will come? So this is cannot be what they say that the Roman mean the Christians. The Roman is the Roman. The Quran called the Christians Nasara. Muhammad do not need to use the word Roman. He can say the Nasara. He did not say that. He say Roman. So this is another false prophecy of Muhammad, and that to prove that Muhammad cannot be a prophet. You mentioned to me too about the uh, the semen, about the sperm, right? Mm -hmm. Well, in the Quran, chapter 86, verse number 6 and 7, Muhammad, he claimed that women, they have semen. Do you believe that women have semen? <laughs> okay, how Muhammad, uh, I don't know if I can only call him now Muhammad or Dr. Muhammad. How Dr. Muhammad now, he discovered that women have semen. This is Ibn Kathir, I will put it on the screen. And this is not my interpretation, so Muslim will not say to you, Christian Prince is lying to you, it doesn't say that, it doesn't mean that. So this is Ibn Kathir, here he says, uh, let, so let the man see from what he is created. This is alerting man on weakness of his origin, which was created. Then he continues saying, خُلِقَ مِنْ مَاءٍ دافق. He is created from water gushing forth, meaning the sexual fluid that come bursting forth from the man and the woman. So there's a water come out of the women, not stay inside the women, and there's a water come out of the man, not stay inside the man, bursting forth, and that thus the child is produced from both of them. Wonderful. So Muhammad, uh, so the Quran claimed that the women she produce water, the man he produce water, and the water is what make babies. Let us see what what that what does that mean? More details, meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women, which referring to her chest. And here they are giving you hadith from Muhammad. He says, the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women are it is the fluid yellow and fine in texture, and the child will not be born except from both of them, i.e. their sexual fluid. What do you think, my sister? Is that what God really inform us? Did you learn in school that women have a semen? It's obvious, right? It's obvious that this is false. Women don't have semen. Muhammad is being foolish. He thought that the women, the liquid, the women she have in her private part during sexual intercourse, and in a funny way he described it as yellow, which means the women he Muhammad he been with, they have a sexual disease, because why it's why it's yellow? They, they, they will it's going to be yellow only if they have certain STD disease. So Muhammad, he think that women, sexual fluid, which is yellow, and man, which is sexual fluid, which is white, is the reason to make a baby. When they mix together, we have a baby. And actually, we find that in the hadith. Here we go, Muhammad, he mentioned that. If we go to the hadith, we will find it in details. A woman, she came to Muhammad, she asked him that she saw a wet dream. Obviously, she is masturbating. Excuse my language. So, uh, so she told Muhammad if she need to wash her private part. So Muhammad, he said, well, if you see a liquid there, you have to wash it. Uh, the wife of Muhammad, she was listening. And she said to Muhammad, 
Those women even have this charge, which means the wives of Muhammad never have orgasm. Otherwise, why the wife of Muhammad? She is so surprised to hear that this woman, she have this charge, and now Muhammad is telling her that she have to wash it. But Muhammad, he claimed now in this hadith, this is why we are mentioning it, that the women discharge is how the baby is made. What Muhammad, he said after his wife, Umm Salama said, Umm Salama smiled, she said, does a woman get discharge? Allah Apostle said, then why does the child resemble the mother? <laughs> what does have to do with resembling the, the mother, you know? The, the women have this charge that how the baby is made. The discharge is the water coming out. This is not the egg. It's a water. In other hadith, Muhammad explained it even more. He make it clear that this is about water. Here it says, if she see the water, you see in Arabic, you said that you are from an Arab family. It says here, إذا رأت الماء. Do you see the word ما? إذا رأت الماء. If she saw the water, so you don't see something is inside the body, right? You see what is outside the body, correct? Mm -hmm. So إذا رأت الماء. If she saw the women, then this is the discharge, and then she have to wash it. And then Umm Salama, she said, well, do the women even have really the discharge? Muhammad, he says, okay, how the, uh, you know, he's saying his wife, you are silly, stupid, you know? Don't you know? So then how the baby resemble his uh, parents or the mother, you know? What do you think? This is a, a prophet. This is Muhammad. Dr. Muhammad showing a big failure and ignorance in what he is talking about, yet he claimed that he received his knowledge from God. But this is cannot be from God. This is a man making things up. The discharge of the women have nothing to do how the baby look like. As you see, Umm Salama, she never had this charge, the wife of Muhammad. She never had it. So if a woman, she never have this charge, especially many Muslim women, they do circumcision for them, which means they will never have orgasm. That means the baby, they cannot, the woman didn't, cannot have a baby. Because women, they don't have this charge. They never have orgasm. What do you think? If you have more evidence, you can give it to me and I will show you that all of them, they are, they are, all the evidence Muslims they have that Muhammad is a prophet, they do the opposite. They prove Muhammad to be false. And I, I say to you, in a friendly challenge, I don't want to use the word challenge because I see that you are nervous already, but let us say in a very friendly ch challenge, my sister, if you can show me one thing, Muhammad, he said is not stupid. Just one thing. We have the whole Quran. If we can find one thing Muhammad did not say, is you know, like, you know, uh, uh, the Quran says that we have to be nice to our parents, but this is what, and this is in the Bible. So what? I mean, everybody know that you should be nice to your, actually in the Bible it says if you, if you, uh, you know, if you harm your parents, if you insult them, the punishment is death. In the Quran, there's no penalty. In the, in the, uh, in the sect of uh, 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 Hanifa, if a man have a sexual intercourse with his mother, there is no penalty. I can show it to you right now. What kind of religion this religion is? Ah, we mentioned this. In the Quran, it says in chapter 25, verse number 54, We go to the interpretation, it says, if a man have sexual intercourse with his own daughter, there is no penalty. What kind of religion says that you can have sex with your daughter? Is that from God? You can right now go open by your own and show it to your mom. And as long as your mom, she know Arabic. Well, here we go. Chapter 25, verse number 54. Read it in Arabic. Al Qurtubi. It's not forbidden. 
to have sexual intercourse with his daughter or she is his daughter from adultery and her mother so now he can have sex with both and there's no penalty and what the what al-qurtubi he says there that this is according to the most accurate opinion of islam which means the majority of the muslims in the world agree that having sex with your child as long as she is not from marriage is lawful it's forbidden for you to have sex with your child from your marriage because then it, she is your daughter but if she is a daughter from adultery well in islam she is not your daughter so you can have sex with the daughter and, and the mother but how that can be from god why are aren't those things out and known because i, I understand my my parents that you know they 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 didn't know better they they learned to read and write when they came in europe and so i understand the ignorance that it's it was there but nowadays it's nowadays we have everything and we we have the translations and we have uh, and, why people are still holding on Islam? Well, people, you know, uh, many, they don't want to see because the truth will hurt. And they, uh, you know, they block it from their mind because if somebody says, oh, I don't want to, don't, don't listen to those people, you know. And actually, Muhammad encouraged the Muslims uh, that if people, they start accusing Islam of things, what do you do? You leave where they are sitting and talking. Muhammad don't want people to know uh, uh, what what people say about this religion, and he forbid them from sitting with those people, so they will not listen and they will not see how Islam is silly and stupid. However, anyone who seek to study and learn, uh, he can find it easy, you know. Yeah. All of all of those, you know, uh, in, in the Quran. Uh, tons of verses. I can show you verses from now until tomorrow. And by the way, I send you the link of Al Qurtubi in the chat, and sorry, in Skype, so you can uh, show it to your parents how the Quran approve having sex with the daughter, if she is a daughter from adultery. Remember, the Quran says it's forbidden for you, your mother and your daughters. Wonderful, but if she is a daughter from adultery, no. How that can be from God? No. What about the man beating the wife? What did you ask your mom about that? No, but I asked her about. Uh, I tried to ask her about uh, uh, Muhammad and Aisha. Aisha or mm -hmm. the the girl, Aisha or Khadija? I don't know. The six years old, you mean? It's nine. No, no, she was six. six. No, she was six. I mean, I mean, there is no difference anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, 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 six is is uh, is just a little baby. I mean, nine. I can say, okay, maybe you know, maybe maybe she was no. giving fertilizer and she's eating vitamin every day. And there is no. And um, I asked her about. I asked my mom about that and. Uh, she told me that I'm, I'm, I feel sorry because God bless my mom, but she told me that back then the years they were counted in a different way, so she was older and, and I believed this story until I started, um, yeah, my mom, she told me that when she was six years old, she was 10 meters tall at that time. And she was able to carry my dad with one finger at that time. But now she cannot. But at that time, my mom, she was really big. And uh, my dad, he, she carry him and uh, with one finger, you know. Yeah, women at that time, they used to be different <laughs> at that time. <laughs> but... Uh, I mean, the girl, she is, look what the Hadith says here. 
and you can share this with your mom. I will give you to you the link. Aisha, she said that my mom, she wanted to send me to the prophet, which means the prophet want to sleep with her. The man, he can't wait. But because I'm too small, what her mom, she was doing, she wanted to increase her weight. So she say, and we read, my mother intended to make me gain weight to send me to the house of the messenger of Allah, but nothing which desired benefit me till she gave me cucumber with the fresh dates to eat. Then I gain as much weight as she desired. So even her mom, she is one, how in the world I'm going to send this child? She is so small. So her mom, she was, she started stuffing her with food. She want her to gain weight as if she is a chicken. And this is Sahih. I give you the link, by the way. This is Sahih. They can't say this is weak. This is, you know, rejected. This is not accepted. And that's why now in countries like Pakistan, there are child abuse and child marriages. And Absolutely. Because... Yeah. Disgusting. This is the religion of abuse for everything. Even men are abused. Even men in Islam is abused, by the way. Because any so religion why, don't give you a freedom, men or women, why, they are abused. Why God, why God allowed this? Well, you see, God, he gave us a freedom. We as a Christian, we believe that God gave us a freedom. And if a human being, he decides to be evil, this is his fault. This is his fault. You have a choice to be or not to be. God, if, if God, he forced you to be something, then that's not fair. And it's not even, uh, let us say, uh, oh, I, if God forced me to be a good person, how how you know that I'm a good person? I, because maybe I'm not, you forced me. So in Muslim society, everyone is forced to pray. Everyone is forced to do certain things, to fast, to, to ritual. Uh, it's, a, it's an enforcement religion. It's not really a choice. And yet they claim that in Islam there is a freedom of a choice and you can and you know, but it's obvious that in Islam there is no, you know, there's a penalty in Islamic countries. If you don't fast, you go to jail. If, if, if they are practicing the Sharia very well, if you don't fast and if you don't pray, they will execute you because that means you are up, up state. So people fast because what? Well, if we don't fast, they will kill us. People pray because if we don't pray, they will kill us. People, they uh, shout Allah Akbar because if you don't, they will kill us. Uh, so there is there is no way to know who is a believer who is not. In a society, everything is based on violence. And all the violence is to protect Muhammad as a person. And they use Islam or Muhammad, he used God and religion for his benefit so he can be worshipped. Yet he claimed that he is a servant of God. What do you think about about Christ? I I had uh, well, ever since I started, um, I took initiative into answering the questions that always bothered me, and then I ended up, uh, as I guess, other millions of childs uh, young muslims <laughs> like me and ended up in your page and in other in other other people and uh, i started um, uh, reading the bible and studying about it and um, um I, I hope to find the peace. <laughs> Did you find any like feeling of peace when you read the Bible?
Yeah. I'm into that. I cry because I want my family to to feel the same peace I want. You know, my mom and my... If you want, you can you can let your mom and your dad speak to me. I will be happy to talk to them, even if, in private, if you want. Like, not necessarily in open, but they have to be with you. Not I don't talk to, uh, uh, to ladies in private. So if you want, you can invite your dad and your mom or your mom alone, uh, like both of you at the same time. And I can explain to her and uh, I can help them both to, to see what you see. Just convince them and let me know what you when you can do that and I will be happy to speak to them. Either live on air if they don't mind or in private, no problem. But you know, it's okay. I mean, you, you, you want you want your, your family to see what you see. Uh, because you love them, you want to save them. But first of all, before we think about saving someone, we have to be saved ourselves. Like I cannot jump in the water to save you from drowning if I do not know how to swim, correct? Yeah. So let us first focus on you. And you, when you are being saved, and you get the peace, and then you can share what you have with them. Because now you learn how to do swim and get out of the uh, ugly current of Islam. So, did you decide to leave Islam already? Yeah. Wonderful. I'm happy to hear that. And I can, I can feel that in your tears already. Uh, what about accepting the Messiah then? Yeah. I mean, to that, we are happy. You know, the, the, the Bible says happiness will be in heaven, in the kingdom of heaven. For one soul is saved. So, uh, you know, I was, I, was, uh, I was right when I called you sister, you are my sister in Christ. And we pray that all those people here, you know, they are listening, a thousand something people, they will uh, join us in prayer right now. And we pray that your parents will join you soon and will become a family of Christ and they will become a happy family. It's good to cry, you know, because tears, those are very, those are the best tears in your, in, in your, in your entire life, maybe. Those are your Jews. And those are the tears which is going to wash all the ugly days in your life. Those are good tears. Don't, those are not uh, tears of uh, sadness. Those are wonderful tears. What can I do apart of reading the Bible and you know the first thing the first thing it's not only about reading the Bible the first thing I want to ask myself what I want okay there is God and there is uh, you know this uh, uh, person which I have peace and I enjoy listening to him and he, you know he, he's God and he is loving, and he is giving, and he's forgiving. But I, what I want from from God, what the, what I want exactly. So the first thing we need to change is how we approach God, what we think about Him. In the Islamic cult, God is a person who give you food. Uh, you know, he's go to heaven. The Muslim men they will have a lot of women. The house, uh, one brick is made of gold. One brick is made of silver. Uh, a lot of women for sexual, you know, entertainment, uh, 80,000 boys. So we need to change the idea of who is God. God in Christianity is not an entertainment. He is not a circus uh, uh, show guy. He is God of love, and love have nothing to do with all those things. So we need to understand that the core of Christianity, to understand that God is love. And because he loved me, 
me specifically and you specifically by name. He is happy to have you to his home. You are not his slaves, even though he created you, even though he can demolish you. So we need to understand first, before we read the Bible, that I am now, from now on, I will pray and I will say, my father, not my God, even though he's my God. That's why we Christians, when we pray, what we say, our father art of heaven. And here you notice how different the relationship between what we have and what the Mohammedan has, because our God is our father. It's not a relation between slaves and slave owner. God do not need slaves. So for God, he love you. He level you. This, you see, I call myself a Christian prince. Why? I'm a king? No. But every one of us is a prince and princess of the Lord. For we are the children of the king of kings. Everyone for him is known by name. We are not just like worms swarming in the earth he know us each one of us by his name this is why when we pray we say our father so what i want from you from now on try to forget about how muslim they pray and speak to your lord calling him father and that will really make you feel way better and will make you feel so close to him which one you prefer to go into a place let us say I want to go to a palace and in this palace there's a king he's the king of kings which one you think will make me feel so good feel peace you, you said you said to me when you read the bible you feel peace but you are now talking to the king of kings you're not calling him king you are calling him my father do you see how loving he is he allow you he love you to say my father not to, he's not asking you to subhanahu wa ta'ala like even they can't even say the name of Muhammad without saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam right? They have to praise Muhammad. So this is the king of kings you say to him my father. As simple as that. Do you notice that we Christians when we speak about the Messiah we just say Messiah we don't say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you notice? Know Why? Because the Messiah he said those are my brothers. The Messiah himself, he called us brothers, even though he is our Lord. Those are my mothers, even though he is our, our, our Lord. So, you know that in the Bible, Jesus, he washed the feet, right? Yeah. You heard that story? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about someone, he washed your feet and he is your God? I, I am, when I when I was trying to define in my own without uh, reading the Bible about how in, inside me I thought of God and I always thought that I feel God is someone whose love is eternal and it's and I never never ever read the Bible and that's why I found peace in it because the 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 idea of God that I had in my mind the idea of example that I had in my mind is someone humble washing the feet it's I never heard about Muhammad washing the feet of anybody and in general, I don't know, I was just looking to find that peace and love and I, I really don't know much about Christianity and Bible and I really, really, really want to have that strength and that solidity in it to say I, I I don't know if you can know it all but I know I'm not created out of nowhere and I know I'm not here for no reason so I 
listening. Yeah, sorry. No, no, I'm listening. Don't worry. You can say whatever you want. Uh, you see, uh, I mentioned that the Messiah he uh, he wash our feet to show you how Islam look at God as something scary. You know, uh, yeah. something uh, you know he's so arrogant. So he's like he's a beast. You know. I was always. I grew up uh, told that I had to fear God. I had to fear him, and I always had this relationship with him. Of, I mean, I didn't have a relationship with him because I, I thought I had this relationship of, I had to be, I had fear. I had to fear God. That's something, I don't know if it's just in my family or it's something really common among Arabs, but it's something that I used to hear also going back in, during the summer when we went back to visit the family. And that's something that fear God and, and, and then I come back here in Europe and people are friendly and happy and loving and then <laughs> I go back there and <laughs> yeah they they claim to be religious and they claim they are better right and they are so yeah. proud but you go there they are corrupt they are violent they, yeah. they, you cannot even have a window without bars because there is no safety a woman she cannot walk on the street because she is going to be a target yeah. uh, but yet, yeah. the second you talk to them, they speak about how how amazing you know uh, Islam yeah. is. So if Islam is amazing, why yeah. that is not uh, showing on you? Exactly. Why isn't it showing in the society when during summer holidays I couldn't go around in the streets and walk uh, safely? Uh, it's always you have to, you know. I mean. Thank God my parents, are, they were never that strict to oblige us to wear anything. But uh, specifically when we were there, we had to watch out. And then here in Europe, it's yeah. <laughs> our, our adopted grandma is Christian. She took care of us. She's... <laughs> Yeah. Well, my sister mm -hmm. in Christ, I'm, I'm very happy for you that you accepted the Lord. And today you are a new person. You are saved. And again, I will I will be happy to talk to your, your, your parents if you wish. If you think you can make them come and talk to me. And uh, just let me know anytime. I will be happy. Or they can call us. You know, they might say to you he's wrong, etc. And again, I, and I gave you all uh, like uh, most of the reference you we mentioned here. I give it to you in Skype so you can show it to your mom and your dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because they might say to you, no, this is not true. This can't be true. And you can show them that this is your Islamic website. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm very happy and, and I'm very proud of you, actually. You know? Uh, you are, you know, you are a very good, quiet person, and the reason you cried because you have a very pure, good heart. And it's not, it's not, uh, it's, this is not weakness. This is strength, you know. Uh, I don't know. Before calling, before actually calling you today, I, I had your, you know, couple of months now. I had it on my screen and couldn't press the calling button because I was afraid. Oh, never be afraid. You know, I, I might I might sound like scary <laughs> and I look scary too. <laughs> but I'm a, yeah, I'm a very yeah. I'm a very friendly lion, you know. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, so don't worry, never worry. And in the same time, always be be brave because because you know uh, we have to stand for our what is right. Otherwise nothing will be right in our life. If we don't stand sure. for what is right then everybody can force what is wrong on us until somebody stop them. People who force people simply 
because they take advantage of your kindness. So it's good to be kind. It's good to be peaceful. It's good to be loving, giving, everything nice. But when it's come to your right, you have to stand for your rights. Otherwise, you will lose your right. They will take it away from you. And I'll just ask a stupid question now. And is, is, I, is your mom there? No. Okay. No. Oh, when I pray, um, I can address God as Father, and then I mean, and and then. Like, how does it work? <laughs> it will work very good. Uh, it is, you know, the, 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 when, I, when I was a kid, the, the first thing I asked myself, well, why we are calling God uh, Father, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. why? Uh, because, I, you know, I grew up in the Middle East like you, and, uh, I mean, like your parents, I don't know if, if how long you've been in, in Europe, uh, but the Muslim, they call their God, and they are slaves of God, and you know, and they have to go to the prayer in a certain time, otherwise they fear the punishment of God. And this God is like a beast, you know, he's a monster. He chases you wherever you want to go. And we as a Christians, we are relaxed, you know, God, our Father, yeah. we pray, we pray before we eat, we yeah. pray uh, when we are alone. Actually, the, the Lord, yeah. the Messiah, he says, when you pray, go to your closet. He don't like hypo hypocrites. He said, don't be like the hypocrite who go and pray in the corners. That's why you don't see Christians, you know, speaking about, hey, guys, I have to go and pray. Why? Because the Lord, the Messiah, he prevented those hypocrites. Because there's a, there's a hypocrite everywhere. You will find them everywhere. So now a Christian who claimed to be a religious person, he cannot brag about being a person who pray. Because the Lord, he says, when you pray, go and pray in your closet. If you go to Matthew chapter 6, you will see uh, the Lord, he, he taught them how to pray. And okay. uh, uh, I will give you a link so you can read it, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, chapter 6, verse number 9, 13. So uh, uh, when you pray to the Lord, uh, just don't be in on fear. Be in on, on peace and love. And, uh, and and enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment that you are speaking to your father. Not the one who scare you, but the one who love you and he protect you. So you can have his protection and you can feel his present with you. So our father, art of heaven, we pray today that our sister, I'm not going to say any name, she today accepted you as Lord and Savior. She denounced the cult of Islam, and today she is your child. We pray, and I ask everyone to pray with me, that the Lord will give her protection, guidance, and wisdom. They will bring always safety and security to her life and her heart. We pray that her tears will become seed of love and will grow in her house. And tomorrow, maybe, she will get married and she will have nice, beautiful children, who they will be the children's of the most high uh, 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 high uh, 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 in heaven. So we pray that today we have a new Christian family within the sister, and she will be an ambassador of Christ between her community. And anytime you, you, you have, you know, you want to call me, I will be happy to hear you. you. Anything you want to say to the people that are listening to you? Look, the people are so happy for you. I don't know if you see the chat, people are really excited to hear you and they are really, uh, you know, proud of you. And all of them, they are praying for you. Thank you. I, I really needed, I need of the prayers. <laughs> I really asked. And now Thank we you. ask you to pray for us too. Remember, you are now part of the family and your prayer is powerful because you are praying to the true God and now you are a child of God and the Lord, he listened to you too. 
actually the Lord maybe he will listen to you more than me because you have a I can tell you have a you know you have a maybe better heart than me I have sometime I have anger from society how people they are misled and etc you have a maybe you have a more uh, a pure heart than mine uh, maybe because you are younger maybe because you are nicer uh, but I can tell from your cries that you are a very good person and the Lord he will listen to you always thank you all right I will let you now go and rest and uh, wash your face and sit with us and join you know join us in the chat and have a good time learn more so you can uh, uh, fight the devil with us and you will receive more blessing from the Lord not because you join the family but because now you join the army of God the army of love not the army of blood and killing Thank you so much. All right, sister. God bless you, and I'm happy to have you, and I hope to hear from you soon again. God bless you. Thank All right. you. Take care. I rest. All right. <clears throat> beautiful, uh, beautiful soul. Uh, we are happy for her. Even though we changed our topic, we were talking about the thief and how Islam is unjust but I believe uh, saving a soul is way more important the whole point of what we do actually is about saving souls uh, and uh, you know we, we are not doing education for the sake of education only we are here doing a mission and the mission is to save soul so whatever the, the mission take us and uh, we go as you see you know this is why i say to you always uh, yes islam is evil yes muslims when they you know follow islam they act and do evil but between those muslims who they are practicing evil because of islam not because they are evil you will find very beautiful people like this lady people have a beautiful heart this is why we as a christians we have anger we get upset uh, to see people deceived, to see people being uh, Muslim torture, Muslim kill, Muslim cut hands, Muslim stone people, Muslim uh, kidnap women, Muslim raping children. And that will make you generate a lot of hatred in your heart. But the reality is, even those who they are terrorists, they are victims of the devil Muhammad. In their mind, they think they are doing good. You see, the Messiah spoke about this. He says, time will come. And people will think by killing you, they are doing a favor to God. Anyone can remind me which verse is that? I will read that for you. Time will come. And people, they think, they think by killing you. That's what they think. They are doing a favor to God. This is exactly what they think. They think when they kill you, they are doing favor to God. The Lord, he never spoke a word and never happened. He knew how Satan misled people and how Satan used people, make them think that they are serving God. So we have always to remember that we, we, we are fighting the devil by fighting Islam. But the most important is, is to save Muslims. We fight the devil so we can save them. The devil is not our target himself because I cannot defeat the devil by a war. The devil will be defeated by God himself. The devil is very powerful. I cannot kill him. I cannot finish him. I cannot get rid of him. He's going to be there. Before I was born, he was there. Before I die, after I die, he will be there. So the only one who have a victory over the devil is going to be the Lord. My victory is to save as many as I can from the mouth of the devil. Somebody trying to call, let us see.
Hello? Please unmute, uh, Rumble. Okay, okay, I did. All right. Are you Hello, Mr. CP. How are you? I'm fine. Are you a Muslim? Uh, I was a Muslim. I left Islam last year. Why you left Islam? I I don't know how should, where should I start. There are, for me personally, a lot of reasons. I'm watching your videos uh, since a few months, and also other um, Christian uh, Christian people who talk about Islam. But let me start about the person Muhammad. How okay. can I take someone as um, as an idol that married a little child? Yeah. I, I couldn't believe that when I uh, read the hadiths about uh, Aisha. Yeah. But you know, you see women now, Aisha, she became big because she ate cucumber. I mean, yes, come on. Yes, and dates, fresh dates to gain some weight. Yeah, yeah. And her mom, she was feeding her every day. So you cannot say the same. You know, the, look, okay, uh, let's listen. I know, I know uh, one of my cousins, he was like uh, two foot tall. Yes. His mom, she started feeding him date and a cucumber. Second day in the morning, not second year. Second day in the morning, he was six foot tall. I swear by Allah, this is a true story. <laughs> hmm. I cannot understand it. Uh, I uh, talk about uh, other, uh, about uh, to my friends about this topic. They claimed that um, that back uh, that in the uh, that in the past it was normal, but that's not true. I showed them for example showed them for example Sahih al Bukhari six nine thirty, mm -hmm. and it clearly says that she was a little child which not reached her puberty. Mm -hmm. And there's also a reference to Fatul Bari. As far as I know, it was the book of um, okay. Uh, just co just, cor Bari. just correction. Hold on. Yes, at uh, that sorry. time Aisha she don't have. Uh, her bleeding yet from her private part yes. but she bleed from her nose because always she play with her yeah. nose that make her a woman because women they can be women in either way either from if when they have their period or if they bleed from their nose so if you know somebody he bleed from his nose is already mature see how I refuted you here we go I got you busted <laughs> <laughs> you busted me CP you got me. <laughs> But the joke aside, uh, for me personally, it's very sad that a lot of people uh, following this religion. I mean, what the hell is wrong with them? I, I that's in, not only this case. I'm uh, my parents. They uh, they say Islam is um, how should I say peace and so on. I told them no, it is not because they yeah. don't know. And <laughs> to be honest, Mr. CP, um, they only know the Quran. They don't know anything about hadiths and tafsirs. They don't know these things. I, for example, I talked about the topic Aisha. My mother wouldn't uh, wouldn't want to listen about it, and that's sad. Yeah. Well, uh, for how long you are listening to me, uh, my friend? Abu. Um, back, back, uh, I, I, I didn't understand you. Can you repeat yourself, please? Uh, for how long you listen to or uh, watch my videos? Um, I am honest to you, love, since last year, because okay. there's, uh, there is, there was, there's an, also an ex-Muslim, which his name is Amir, and uh, he's Iran, uh, he is from Iran. Yeah. He left Islam ten years ago, and he is now Christian, and he is always talking about you and about your books, and I. Yeah, I, I met, okay. I met Amir, yeah. I met Amir in person actually. I went to Germany, and we did live together actually. Really? We, yeah, we did and once. Uh, we did once live together. He came to the apartment I was staying in, him and his brother and other uh, uh, brother with them, and we had mm -hmm. a live broadcast uh, from the apartment was I was staying in. Yeah. Yeah, but to be honest, um, a lot of people, uh, for for especially where I live, they are scared about you because they always claim that you are lying and so on. But to be honest. These sources you are mentioning, they, these are their sources. <laughs> yeah, well, if, if, if I'm lying, that means their source is a, is, a, is a source of lying, you know, because everything I say is there, you know? Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Mr. CP, uh, can you do me a favor, please? Can you show the audience Sunan and Nasai 3177? And Nasai 3177, okay, hold seven, on. Seven. Yes, please. And Nasai, is that the, the, num the Arabic uh, uh, number? Uh, version of it or the English? 
Uh, it is the English for uh, the internet site sunna.com. Okay, the number again. Uh, okay, uh, sunna nsa 3177. 3177, all right. Okay. Because this Let hadith was one of the main reasons why I left Islam. I uh, couldn't believe this. Why, you are a Turkish? Uh, yes, uh, I have Turkish descendants. Oh, okay. Yeah, you see here, this is another proof that when Muhammad he claimed, or the Muhammad and they claim, that Muhammad he said that you will conquer uh, Constantinople. He, he, this is not true because he was speaking to the Arab, not he did not they mention the Turkish. People. Yeah, yes. and and, and then and then he went yes. to invasion and he failed. You know, he invaded uh, Tabuk. The purpose is to go all the way to uh, Constantinia, and he failed. The hadith you are choosing actually can be found even in Sahih Muslim, not only in an essay. And it says here, the last hour would not come until the Muslim fight with the Turks. People who their faces would be like a hammered shield, wearing clothes of hair and walking with shoes of hair. So Muhammad here making fun of the Asian people because remember, the Turkish at that time, they are not mixed with the European uh, and this is why they are just pure Asian. So he's making fun yes, of their look. Yeah. That's uh, that's true. But I, uh, to be honest, the reason why I mentioned, um, can you wait a second, please? All right. Anne, you say it Yeah. And the fingers. Uh, I have to. I have to call. Sorry, Mr. Prince. It's all right. No problem. Okay. See you. Uh, see you soon. I will call you back. Sure. Sure. No problem. Bye. All right. I have many Turkish. Actually, they contacted me uh, to express their uh, uh, gratitude, and uh, they are thankful for what we do. And they left Islam after watching my videos or reading my books. Uh, do we have any Muslim want to take the challenge and prove us wrong? As you see, Islam is collapsing. As the video says that uh, Islam is going to face an, an abal avalanche. It's like a snow. The difference is Islam is so dirty to compare to the snow. Do we have any Muslim? Any Muhammadan? What the name of my book? Just go to uh, to Amazon and type Christian Prince. You will find the, the list of my books. Any brave Muslim? He have the courage and the knowledge to speak to me. It's really amazing that uh, uh, even those who they have, let us say, they are so angry and they come to argue and debate with us. First time they argue, they curse me, they call me names. Second time they do the same, third time, fourth time. And then after that, you find that they left Islam. Do you know what is that telling you? That Muslims, when you debate them, I don't call it a debate, really, because you have to corner Muslims. You don't debate Muslims. Uh, they go in denial in the beginning because it's painful. It's like, you know, somebody is so proud of himself and then he don't want to say that when you hit him, he is in pain. So he claimed nothing happened. They claim that your what you just brought to us mean nothing, do nothing. But in reality, what we are doing is very big, this big destruction for this cult. And they leave Islam. And the proof that they leave. And that's why those who have a career in Islam, they will never get it close to me. Like we go to Zakir Naik life. He was life, we challenged him to debate, he ignored us. We go to this kid with his name, uh, Islam uh, Learn Turn something. The coward, he told the admin, block them, block them, block them. We have no time for those people. Coward. He don't dare even to mention my name. So, uh, Mimi, Hijab, Lili, all of them, they are a bunch of cowards. 
a person who have a career of making money from Islam, he will never get close to me. They will debate with you if you are a person who have blue eyes, or you're an African who do not know Arabic, you have no idea, then they will debate with you. The second they knew that you are a person who knows you have all the laundry of Muhammad. We have all his panties, including the condoms. And this is why they will go after someone who knows nothing. Here they knew that they are no one. Somebody's saying, I'm so happy that he's talking about Islam today, not politics. By the way, my friend, maybe you don't agree with me about politics, but you need to remember, you can be wise in something and stupid in something else. Either you are wise or you are a fool. And I don't talk about politics. I don't. I condemn evil. This is not politics, my friend. Like yesterday, we spoke about Putin who invade a Christian country. Who is the happy Christians? Killing Christians. Who is the happy Jesus? This is not politics. The greed of man is his evil. Russia is the biggest country in this earth. They are not missing land. They are not short of land. Their land is even empty. So this is not politics. Yesterday we received a call from a brother and he said it, it looked like this topic will divide us. I don't care, my friend. I don't want people to be united with me or with my work when they support evil. Divided about evil, I have no problem. I don't want to be united defending evil. Light and darkness cannot be under one roof. And a person who claims to be Christian, if he claims to be, he has to prove that he is. How you prove it? You don't take a side of any political side. You take side of what is right against what is wrong. As simple as that. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to join us? Any Muhammadan, may they, may they. If you call me and you defend your religion, you will get extra version in heaven. And you know, for me, I like versions, honestly. And uh, you know, what I like about those versions, that all of them, they look the same. They have the same image, the same picture, the same height, the same hair, the same eyes, the same name. So look how beautiful. You have hundreds of thousands of women, all of them, they have the same face. Look how beautiful is that. And all of them, they sing the same song. You go to your bedroom, she's naked. And the one next to her, she's naked. And the one next to her, she's naked too. And the one next to the next to the next, she is naked too. And the one, the next, to 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 the next, she is naked too. And all of them, they have the same face. You start looking, which one I will start with first? The first naked, the second naked, the third naked, the naked next to the naked, or the naked after the naked, or the naked before the naked. Mm. And then you say, you know what? I will do like Lotto. I will give them numbers and then I will choose a number and guess what because all of them look the same and all of them they have the same name still I will be confused which one I will start with because number one her name is Hur number two her name is Hur too number three her name is Hur number four her name is Hur so I grab a paper 
Hey, the winner, her, her name is Hur. Who is Hur? All of them, they come. Oh boy. And now, when the Prophet of Allah, he promised us that their ass will be one mile size. Listen to me. If you go right now to do shopping for a TV, who of you will buy a small screen? Let us be honest here. One mile ass. Isn't it, this is so beautiful? Do you see how much Allah, he care for you? Which God in the world? He promised you such a woman. Her ass is one mile. Aren't you sick from women having small, tiny ass? What we would do with this ass? Nothing. One mile. I can grow potato, tomato, a cucumber. I mean, we, I can, you know what? I got an idea because Allah, he said that he smoothed their skin for a thousand years. Look how slow this God, man. If each woman he take care to take care of her, it take him 1,000 years to smooth his skin. Why she was alligator? Anyway, so 1,000 years. So I will have a challenge for you. You know, in some channels when they make a business, you know, like today we will, we will have a give out. Okay, what is the give out? If you were able to bring me a Muslim to debate me, I will give you free ticket to climb my future wife in heaven of Allah, which her ass is one mile high and it is so smooth, which means you can grab nothing and you will slide. So when you hear those promises of Muhammad, you see how foolish, how stupid it is. One mile ass. If her ass is one mile, how big her panty? And how big her fart? Oh, and here, by the way, we have to be careful about security. Joe Biden, he might find you. If he hear there's a lot of methanol coming from the bum of your wife, they will accuse you even of a global warming. And you might find yourself, instead of going to heaven, going to jail, because you are the reason of having endless number of women, each one of them, her ass is one mile, and they are farting non-stop, especially if they come to America, because American, they eat a lot of beans. How we can fix this issue? However, we need to look at the bright side of the promise. The bright side is, let us say there's an army of wicked men, they are coming to kill you. And you have no weapon what do you do you command one of your wife only to bend over in their direction and you command her to fart after you light a candle Boom. they are burned all of them this is what is called chemical weapon mass destruction can you imagine how big the flame in case you do not know Fart is very flammable. Mm. You know, first time I saw this hadith about the women ass is one mile. I said to myself, there must be a mistake in the understanding. This is cannot be true. So I did read it second time third time and then I questioned the teacher about it and he said <laughs> look at this guy he is afraid of from one mile ass women in fact they get more pretty when their ass is bigger and this is why Allah he promised us such a promise and uh, for sure I was convinced with the answer I found it very super intelligent and it's true that's why they say to you, size does matter. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> if we go here, <clears throat> let us see here. This is the book of Mustad Imam Ahmed. Okay, here we go. And we will use Google Translation to translate the Hadith for you.
and by the way here uh, this this man he is the founder of the biggest sect of the Muslim Sunni so the Muslim can't say this guy is an idiot the Hanbali I think uh, Mimi Hijab is a Hanbali so let us translate <clears throat> Muhammad here describing for you what you will receive in heaven for the lower or the lowest Muslim this is Musnad Ahmad, variant number two, page number 537, hadith number 10549. The Messenger of Allah, may Allah pray on him and salute him because Allah is the slave of Muhammad. He said the lowest status of a people of paradise is the one who uh, uh, is that he has seven level. In the in the in the heaven he have seven degrees and he will be in the sixth and above him will uh, is the seven and here you see by the way something stupid I mean he is the lowest and he there is seven degrees and he is in the six how he's in the lowest what if he is the lowest he should be in number one number six is not the lowest this is sixth floor the heaven have seven floors. But anyway, Muhammad, he says stupid things. And that he has a 300 uh, servant. Uh, and he received lunches and rest every day. That's good. Rest from what? 300 tray of food. They are made of gold. The, the, the translation here says page. This is tray. And each one of them, it says here color, but it's, it means taste. Each one of them taste is different from the other one. So you will eat a 300 tray of food every day, brother. And each tray have different tastes from the other one. What do you want more? And then he says, uh, if you go to the end here, <laughs> and he will have wives, 72 wives among the beautiful Huris. In addition, his wives in this world. Each will take her seat. This is her ass. This is the translation here is funny. So each one of them, her seat, will take a size of one mile of the ground. So when she sit, one mile in the ground will not fit her booty. May Allah bless her booty. Now we have to be honest here that this is cannot be found in any religion except in the religion, in the true religion of God, Allah. <laughs> Somebody tried to call me, let's see. You are live on air, my friend. Are you a Muslim? Hello. Um, yeah, I was, I was one. You were a Muslim? Um, I'm I'm not I'm not that sure about it. Oh, you are not you know, sure yet. I'm, oh, okay. I'm I'm a bit nervous right now. <laughs> to don't be don't worry. Sorry, if I, I am. I uh... watched a lot of videos uh -huh. uh, from you. Okay. And um, I'm first watched videos from Amir. You know, like uh, the other guy told. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, then I I thought about the Islam, and I was like, uh, there are very shocking things like Aisha and many other things. And then I read a little bit the Bible, and I studied about the, about the Bible, but I don't know this this whole thing with God, and I'm I'm not that convinced about it right now. So you so you then so you generally. so you, like you are not you are a Muslim, not a Muslim, atheist. What are you now? Yeah, I I don't know really. Uh -huh. I'm 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 searching the right way. Okay. Well, uh, maybe I can help you. There's anything I can help you with? Um, can you explain me more about the Christianity uh, generally? Like, um, what's about the Christianity? Well, I will, I will, I will, uh, I will try to make make uh, the story simple for you, so you can yes. comprehend it easy. See, when yes, when uh, uh, when you are born, there is a woman. She give you a hug. Who is this woman? Mm -hmm. My mother. Okay, how do you know she is your mother? Um, because she's my mother. 
Like she is the first one who see you, right? The first one who touch you, the first one who know you, the first one who right. loves you. And right. this mother carried, carried me nine months. Yeah. So, but this mother, even though you are like full of blood now and look dirty and you are screaming, you know, you are not even pleasant. Still, she is so happy to hug you. Correct. Right. That is a Christianity. So God, even though when we are born. We are covered by blood and I will make you feel here understand that blood means sin let us make it this way mm -hmm. we have our sin we have our fault we have our madness we have our bad things yet this God who gave us birth he created us yes because he's in absolute love he hug you that is a Christianity so all what God he want is to recognize him like I ask you, who is the one who hug you when you are born? You said, my mother. I said, how you know? That is God. The mother, she don't ask for return. She love you. Anytime you go back home, she hug you. You stay away from her, she pray for you. You get um, married, she cry for you. You get sick, she she's, get sick with you. So it is an absolute love. That is God. God, he put his some of his love in your mother and my mother. God mm -hmm. is love. So to know Christianity is to learn that God is love. And because he loves you. Yes, he hug you and he wants you to come back. So the Bible says for God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. To do what to save the world. To hug you. The Lord, he says, come to me, the tired one. Knock at my door and I will open for you. So Christianity is not made so you might worship God. Christianity is not even made. Christianity is love. And love is not made. Love is a true. You are born yes. with it. And you have it right. until you kill it. So with the Christ, you enjoy love, you live love, and you will become love. And then... What the Lord he says from their fruits you shall know them so when you are a person who follow the God of love and dignity and beauty naturally you will become a tree who give love and enjoy it your fruits will be good fruits and the fruit here is not about apple or orange is about mm -hmm. you enjoying life like yeah about enjoying life you enjoy life even when life is not a pleasant because who said that Christians they have a better life let us say financial maybe not you know mm -hmm. there's a lot of Christians they are very poor uh, the disciple of Jesus they don't even have money I mean they live uh, they have a miserable life when it's come to finance and uh, and security you know people kill them mm -hmm. people chase them but yet they are enjoying their life to the last moment even when they feed them to the lions, they are enjoying their life. So with the Christ, you enjoy everything, even the sad moment, because you feel you are not left alone and you are doing the right thing by providing the best you can to save the people. In your case, because you are trying to find out who is the Messiah and what is a Christianity, you need to think about God as the same as when your mother, she gave you a hug, when you are just born, born as naive, born as limited, born as someone have no ability even to clean himself even to feed himself so god he provide you with everything god he gave you everything so why we don't love the one who gave us and the one who hug us and the right. one who take care of us how come we deny all what he gave us and we become selfish so to make it simple christ is against against you being selfish the same as a Christ, he gave himself to save you. The second you accept that, then you become a person like Christ who gave yourself to save others. And that will make our life in this earth a beautiful life, not evil, not ugly. If one, mm -hmm. if, if, if the whole world practice one sentence of Christ's teaching, just one sentence, not the whole Bible, love your enemy, there's no enemy left and there's no war. That's we right, spend... We spend trillions of millions of dollars 
To do what? To defend security, because everybody is afraid of everybody. If we practice one sentence, all the poor in the world, they will not be poor. We spend the major money, trillions of dollars in America and other countries for the sake yeah, of right. weapon who do nothing except destruction. We make them for destruction. We, made, we don't make them to build. We made them to destroy. One sentence yeah. can save humanity. So that what is Christ, my friend. It's about saving you, saving humanity, saving your family, saving the earth, and saving us to be with God. Nothing more, nothing less. God do not need anything from you because he gained nothing if you worship him or not. He do not yeah, need you. That's right. This, this, was, this was a nice speak. Uh, you know, this is, this is the thing I find, uh, I find awesome in the Christianity. Like, it's, it's, it's about love. It's about, uh, like, love your enemy and uh, do good things to the earth. Yeah, I don't know. I, have, I, I, I think I have to read the Bible first and then, then maybe I think other ways. How, 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 how long you you watching my videos? How long you are watching my videos? Um, the thing is, when I was 16, 17 years old, um, oh, well, I had you a know. couple of friends. They was they was uh, about ten years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I had some friends. They were they were really Muslims, really strictly, mm -hmm. and they they looked videos from you and say like you are a very satanic person and saying bullshit things, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I I don't see any video from you like nine years, ten years now. Till till last year I started to see a couple of videos from you, and then also from Amir first. Mm -hmm. And you know I'm I'm just thinking about about life and what's the purpose of life. But on the side I'm I'm thinking, you know like you have you have the mankind and you, you have so much people, so much religions and. Uh, just one go to heaven and all other are burning in the hell is like for what you know like how you say god don't need us but for what for what purpose we are on the earth and you know like you have so much um, good things and so much bad things and yeah i don't know it's like this, this is the question yeah I just mean. take it simple take it simple as i say to you it's not about if you think that everything everything have to be about my benefit that make you a selfish person in Christianity this earth is not about your benefit it's not because it's if like everyone it's yeah it's about uh, uh, your benefit should be how I can benefit other people from me which mean how I can be helpful how can be how I can be wonderful how I can be loving so how I can take care of people. And then if people around you, they think the same way, they will think about you. They will think about how they can be helpful to you, how they can be careful, you know, caring for you. See, life is like a mirror, you know? So do to others what you like people to do to you. Very simple. So if you are a selfish, that means you, you feel. A selfish person, he have no future, he have no friends, he have, even his wife is not his wife because selfish even when he eat yes. he look at her she is eating too much you know this is not you know I'm, because he's selfish even if a man he love a woman if he is selfish he does not love her because he love her he love her because she give him a special joy he is selfish he's not in love he love himself and yeah, that makes sense yes. so in christianity is the opposite you learn the first thing you learn that you drop yourself from the calculation you don't think about things because of yourself. You think about doing the right thing because it is the right thing to do to others yeah. before yourself. So oh, that's that's a nice look on, on this. Yes. Yeah. So it's so it, it's different from Islam. Like in the Quran, it says, uh, Allah He says, "Wama khalaqtu al-insa wa jinn illa liyabudu." Allah He did not create the insa and the human, the human and the genie, except to worship Him. In 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 the Bible, is not about that. God, you know, don't need worshippers. God need no one. God want you to be saved. God want you to be, the Bible says, be holy like your father. So uh, it's totally different approach of life, thinking about life. Even heaven in Islam is about you, selfishness. A man, a man, he will get a lot of reward. In heaven, in Christianity, your reward that you will be the same as angel, he and she, they will not get married, which means there's no sex. So what uh, being about angel mean? Well, in, 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 
we are we taught that angels they protect us angels they care for us so mm. what the angels get from their job i mean they don't have sex they don't eat <laughs> they don't get paid that's right yes it's you right. know it's but like uh, but yet everybody love uh, but yet everybody love angels right and when we say angels we, that doesn't mean sound bad right mm -hmm. so right. they don't get paid they don't get any reward for what they do but obviously there is a reward i don't think that the angels don't enjoy what they are doing i don't think they are sad so god will give you a happiness which you cannot imagine have nothing to do with sex and food and money. Yeah, I think like the God who creates uh, pleasures like sex and money and all those things, like he can create mo much, much more. Like without absolutely. I mean, that's, that's isn't right. he almighty? I agree. You know, agree, there's yeah. a lot of things we cannot even explain. You enjoy, yes. you know, like you can explain it by science, but science can't explain how that is even exist. So is it like why even we why we enjoy a smell, why we enjoy your music? What happened to us? Why people dance when they listen to music? I mean, your <laughs> body have nothing to do with the music, right? That's right. So still, you know, you know, it's, by the way, if you if you see people dancing, try to mute uh, the, the let's say you have a watching a video, try to mute the video. And watch people dancing. People will look so funny, right? right yes, what they are right. doing? And people moving their hands. This guy moving his head. This guy is moving his. And people they go even they go crazy when they are dancing. So it's very interesting to study how God He gave us ability, which no one can explain. That there is something. It's called music, and we call it music, but it's a sound. We call it music sometimes, because sometimes it's a it's a sound sound make you pleasant. That's why we call it a music. Mm -hmm. But we cannot explain really how in the world that made your body move, how in the world that made your body enjoying what you hear, and you are in total harmony with it. Yes. Yes. So if God He can do that, and He gave us he such can a pleasure, make much more. And, and remember, music have nothing to do with sex, mm -hmm. right? There's no sex in right. that. There's no food, which means I did not get any physical feed. No physical feed. Mm -hmm. It's not nothing enter my mouth, nothing touch my skin, nothing, uh, uh, no nothing sexual. So what is the music doing then? You listen to a symphony uh, of anyone. You say, wow, this is that's amazing. You know, this is really amazing. Or somebody playing the flute, you know, it's so beautiful. How that how that is affecting how that you. can make you yes, yes. So God is is God is a miracle and he is he made a he he created many miracles within you. Yeah. You know this 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 verse um with uh, on the fruits you shall recognize them. From their fruit, uh, you shall recognize them. Yes. Of course. Uh -huh. Yes. So this was one one thing I thought a long time about it, and this, this is absolutely true. You know, like if if you see the uh, Islamic countries, Muslim countries, mm -hmm. like so much is wrong there. So much is wrong there. I'm I'm a Kurdish people. I'm a Kurdish from Turkey, mm -hmm. from Turkish side. And if I see the people there, how angry they are, and how much they they claim to be. Uh, God-fearing persons and doing good things, but you know, like they they do so much bad things, and I don't know. I was like, I had, I had, I had a lot of things that uh, let me think about it, Islamic thing. And now, yeah, you know, when we say that the Messiah yeah. is the is the is the Lord, you know, uh, when he was called the King of Kings, it's not the King of Kings. It's just uh, you know, he has soldiers. He's the king of wisdom. <clears throat> he speak. He is the source of wisdom, and his wisdom is for our benefit. So when we say, like you know, in Matthew, uh, by their fruit you shall know them. Uh, that that is a that is a sentence you can actually you can examine yourself with it. Not only them. You 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 start you start with yourself. From their fruits you recognize them. You know them. Go to the mirror mm -hmm. and check who you are. You know. Not not just a look. I'm saying the mirror. I'm saying the mirror of your action, the mirror of your fruits. Not the mirror in the wall. If I go to the mirror now, I will lose. You know, <laughs> right. I will look so bad. So, uh, 
from their fruit you shall know them I start that with myself before I start judging others mm -hmm. who am I if I practice this verse am I a person who have the fruits which will make me feel good about myself or in my inner inside me I know that my fruit is really disgusting I go and judge people and say look at their fruits but my fruits is the scary one so this this sentence is not about their fruits it's about your fruit too it's about yeah, my fruit right. so if we I, have we have to take it into account where we examine everything including ours starting from ourselves like how good you yeah. are if you are married how good you are your wife how you are good how good you are how living how forgiving to your children uh, mm -hmm. uh my fruits yeah how, how how honest you are at work i mean do you uh, uh, like when you get a chance to take a nap when the boss is not there you do it uh, or you work hard and you are honest and you believe that you deserve the wages you are receiving uh, so right. this sentence is not about there it's about you and about me and about there yes yeah so I, I absolutely right so you know you, you can actually use this one this uh, this verse in uh, mm -hmm. in the Bible to uh, to uh, let us say you know like we go to mechanic we see uh, like a light in 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 the uh, in in the car light up like the engine something you know they need time to change oil a time to change etc there's something broke this verse mm -hmm. is is exactly the, the sensor the sensor yes. so you can censor your yourself before you censor others where I am, I, where I stand, what is my fault, how I can correct them. So I advise everybody to uh, to practice uh, such a verse because it's very important. Uh, and same for like wife and husband, like, you know, the wife, she examined herself. What is my fruit to my husband? How good I am to him? What I did this week uh, to make him bad, uh, look, uh, feel bad or good. Same for the husband, what I did with my wife, how, 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 uh, uh, faithful I am how uh, uh, how much I provide to home and of her needs how much I can uh, can uh, can do better maybe emotionally so it's a very important verse in the Bible even though it's uh, just a short it's, it's two words you know it's not nothing uh, it's not like a long story you know you go to the Quran the Muslim they say to you look at the Quran can you read Quran like this we read the Quran in Arabic you die laughing you know, there's no meaning. It's useless. There's stupid things. You go in the Bible, you read yeah. two words. We are not reading poetry and we do not need poetry. And God, if man can do poetry, well, God can do the best poetry. <laughs> so I agree. the Quran is not even a poetry. It's a failure. It's not even a good for rap. They try to sing it to make it sound good. But the second you understand what you are singing is so stupid. But yes. two I, I, saw, I saw a video from you. Uh, oh. You was uh, you was uh, reciting something like not from the Quran, just, just uh, your own words, and this it sounds like a Quran recitation. Yeah, you can you can recite anything if you know how if you know if you if you learn the way to recite, the way to do it, yes. then you can make any text sound like Quran. Actually, there is a sheikh. Let me let me look for him. Uh, a sheikh. He. Uh, uh, he was doing a, a conference in France uh, and he asked a person who is a, a, a like a foreign person a, fr a French he don't even know Arabic uh, he told him who here don't know Arabic he can volunteer come to the stage and then the sheikh uh, he recite two uh, verses one of them is fake he just created on the stage you know yeah. and one uh, is from the Quran and he is saying to them that your heart will tell you which one is the right one your heart will tell you but when uh, uh, when this guy he come to the stage they ask him which one you like more he chose the fake one <laughs> he said he said to him ask him now which one uh, which one uh, you know his heart feel uh, uh, like uh, comfortable for, he uh, he chose the the one which is fake. Wrong people one. die, <laughs> yeah. People die laughing because supposedly he which his heart, you know, because this is from Allah. 
his heart will make him uh, uh, he, he will make this person like be amazed you know he right away he will choose the uh, 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 the Quran but he chose the fake one I will try to find the video and play it <coughs> All right. Anything else, my friend, you want to say? Uh, just one thing. Um, the thing about the Trinity is something I'm, I'm confused about it. Can uh, you explain it to me a little bit more? Well, the Trinity, you see, okay. How many people you are? How you mean this? How many people you are? Me, myself, or? Yeah. You want? Why you think you're one? <laughs> because if I'm one person. What one person mean? Like I, I, have, I, have, I have one one soul, like one mind. Okay. I'm one well, human being. Okay, so look, you just mentioned three, not one. You just said you are one soul, one mind, and one human being. Those are three. Because oh, your mind wow. is you, your mind is you, wow. your soul is not physical. Is it? Wow, right. I agree. And your body is you. So a human being is a body and a soul and a mind. If one of them is gone, if your brain stops, your heart stops. You're dead. If and your soul goes, if your soul go out, you are dead. So three in one. So if you can be three and one in the same time, why God cannot? In the same time, you will find that the fingerprint of God is in everything he created. Everything is based in number three. What is the essence of life for a human being? If if water is gone, if air is gone, if sun or light is gone, we are dead. Right. Wow, man, this is, this is awesome. Yeah, so Trinity is very simple, but some people, they make it so complicated, and I believe the reason they do so because they don't know how to explain themselves, you know? Like sometime we are, we might be so smart to understand something, but we are not gifted to explain it. That's why there is someone he is student. They like this teacher. They don't like the other teachers. But all of, both of them, they have the same degree. Mm -hmm. But one of them okay, yeah. is gifted. Of he have the gift of teaching. He can teach. Is a qualified to be a teacher the other one is a qualified to have a degree but not to be a teacher yes. so Trinity simply is very uh, uh, very simple God is a three and one in the same time if God cannot be three and one then he cannot be one he cannot be anything you know I mean if there is something he cannot be then how he can be God so my God is a three and if if somebody came to me and says I have God and he is Five billion person, yet he is one. Well, mm -hmm. if the number is not what uh, what will make my objection, what will make my objection or approval, if his is this true or not? Because if it's true, mm -hmm. if there is a billion God and they are one God at the, at the same time, well, they are his exist. He, he is one billion and he is one. So it is not the number. And if somebody says to you, "I have one God." He think he is superior from someone he say I say have a billion God no because no. It, the the question is the one who have one God versus the one billion God religion if it is true or not maybe both of them they are false yeah same right. time there is many people they worship God as Satan they, they there's a temple it's called the temple of Satan like if they have one God. So having one God doesn't make you uh, <laughs> superior. <laughs> yeah, 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 I understand. So, so you believe in one God, yes, but this is not the reason to be right. The reason to be right that he is the true God and he is the one, the God of miracles, and he did all the miracles. The miracles of God is not to show skills, like it's not a showtime, it's not a TV show. Mm -hmm. It's to, yes. to give you a clearance, says, listen, what God can do, what make God God, is the one who can do what no one can do. And look what I can do. Carry your chair and walk. If there is any doctor, he can do that? No. If no. there's anyone he can, he have, which means he have control to recreate your body, to fix it without even doing anything, without surgery, without mm -hmm. medicine. That is God. God simply 
is a miracle. And in order for God to be a miracle, then he have to be able to be a person who do miracles. And that is a Christ. So Christ, even Muslims, like I saw a video of the uh, Sheikh uh, Mufti Mink, he was saying, Jesus, Isa, he waved his hands. He, he just waved my hands, Allahu Akbar. And all the crowd became healed. Well, how he can do that? How, how he can wave his hand? Just wave his hand. He did not even say anything. Mm -hmm. And all the crowd is healed. So how that can be explained? That is God. How a person can say to you, you know, uh, but like he, he put some mud on your eyes. The mud will make you sick. The mud will make you dirty. The mud will make you blind in the top of your blindness. But by making a blood, mix it with water. He just created a symbolic for the creation. For God, when he created Adam and Eve, he created Adam from mud. So he put mud on the eye of the blind man, the man he see. Yeah, he, gave him, he gave him a new eyes. So uh, uh, the Trinity simply is the power of God to be mm -hmm. what he wants to be. And if I oppose that God cannot be three and one, then I'm opposing that God can be whatever he wants. And that will destroy the whole mm -hmm. idea of believing in of God. God. Because yes. God is called Almighty. Yeah, God called Almighty because He can do and He can be whatever He wished to be. Who is going to tell God what you can, what you cannot? Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, nice. Thank you very much for this conversation, CP. All right. Uh, Anytime have a, you know, you need more help, let me know and you can call me. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. All much. right. Take care. Someone in the chat saying, Hitler, he was a Christian. Yeah, you know, Hitler, he was a Christian. This is why the Muslim, they print his book and he praised Muhammad and he was killing Christians, slaughtering them. And uh, he was a Christian because he is not proud to be Christian. I mean, look how stupid people are, you know? <laughs> and you know, just to let you know, if Hitler was victorious in his war, you will see the one who is trying to condemn Hitler, he's praising Hitler. This is what happened with Muhammad. Muhammad is the same as Hitler, a scumbag. However, Hitler, by the way, is way more honorable. We cannot compare Hitler to Muhammad. We never Hitler, we never heard of Hitler raping women. We never heard of Hitler taking a bunch of kids for rape. We never heard of Hitler going to the house of a Jew and uh, beating him to tell him where he hide his money. Hitler, even though he's an evil man, he is a billion times better than a person his name is Muhammad. We can't even compare. Like, did Hitler marry a child? No. Did Hitler kidnap uh, somebody's wife? No. Did Hitler go to the, uh, his own son's house and he flirt with the wife when she is not there? No. So Hitler is a billion times more honorable than the filthy Muhammad. This is the truth. Take it. Or leave it. Remember, Abduls, you are talking to Christian Prince. And you have a low IQ, like your God. God, he used us to give the right answers. And this is why we wipe the floor with you before even you say what you say. Can you respond to my friend? All right. What is your friend? Also, can you show the verse the Quran ISIS based because they are based in, on Sharia, the topic? Can you respond to my friend? People need to hear the stupid of Allah. Yeah, then no, I mean, you're asking me <coughs> to do many things, I see. Uh, I don't know the, the guy who's asking me in Skype his name is Kila I don't understand what you want my friend what about you ask those Muslims who they you are asking me to respond to them to join us here call me
Do we have any Muhammadan who dare to call me? We just heard that the three Muslims left Islam today. They are dumping their versions. <coughs> Hello? Hello, uh, wait. Um, let me see if I can hear you. Hello. I hear you, my friend. Go ahead. You're live on air. Yeah, so I wanted to ask, you know, the Muslims, um, so how can Muhammad be the best example when uh, when he was a sinner if Jesus was sinless and Muhammad is is a, be is a better example when he's a sinner? That's like, is Allah stupid? Uh, no, you see, you, you maybe maybe we should understand this uh, in a different way. Muhammad is the best when it's come to sin. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> because you know, if Muhammad is the best, yet he is a person who lives in sin and enjoys sin, and the Quran confirmed that he is sinner. Uh, so, what make Muhammad best in any way? So the best man, Muhammad, he go to the house of his own son and he flirt with the wife. And this is to make him the best man. Well, there's many good men. They will never do that. They will never go to the house of their sons and they will not flirt with the wife when the husband is not there. Muhammad is the best man, but he go and, you know, he, uh, uh, he have a sexual desire for a child. Because if you, the second you think about marrying a child, why you marry a child? What is the, what is the, what is the point? marriage you look at a female you are a male and you look at this female and the first attraction it's it's her uh, gender right it's uh, he she is being female yeah so it is very much sexually motivated even we can call there is love it, it's always about that there is sexually heavily motivated so when muhammad you look at the child she is six years old how that motivate him to ask for her hand and think about her how that can work so there's no question that Muhammad is a very disgusting, evil person. But however, for the Muslims, he is the best man because he's the best pervert. Yes, of course. So, down. yeah, I think the Muslim, they were talking about Muhammad. He is the winner when it's come to competition of who is more ugly and disgusting. It, that's probably the context. I have to check it out later. And, you know, uh, you've said before, I've heard, you know, I've, I've been watching you for uh, a long time. And... Uh, uh, you said like uh, to a Muslim, like, uh, uh, so tell me any chapter, I'll show you stupidity in that chapter. Can you exactly. show me stupidity in chapter one? Chapter one? Yes. Well, it's very easy. I mean, it's, it says in the beginning, in the name of Allah, who's talking? <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, I thought about that too, but you know, I want to see it out there. Okay, what about, what about verse number two? Allah, he says, thanks to Allah. What about Actually, what about verse number three? Verse number three, repeating verse number one. How stupid is that? But I don't understand because the Quran the, the Quran says that actually the word the, the Quran is actually the word, the spoken word of Allah. So is Allah saying thanks to Allah? Is that true? Yeah, this is what Allah is saying. You see, the, the the verse the chapter doesn't say say pray like this say this. No, it says in the name of Allah. Uh -huh. Who's talking? Okay. Allah. The most gracious, most merciful, okay. Then you will find that verse number three is already mentioned. Look, it's here. <laughs> Why are you repeating the same thing? And then he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah, thanks to Allah. What the heck, what the heck is that? And then, yeah, all of it. And then Allah, he worship Allah. He says, thee do worship and find we see, we, we seek. Show us a straight thing. So simply, this is supposed to be a prayer, and it was trying to copy the prayer which is mentioned in Matthew, our art of heaven. <laughs> Man, they, they are really copying everything. Every good in Islam is actually copied from, from the Bible, you know? Yeah. From what I see. And uh, like, uh, oh, last thing before I go, like, can you show like something that, wait, um, like, you know, ISIS and all these groups, they base themselves on on teachings. Like I've seen a lot of of verses, but like the most the most quoted verses are like chapter nine, verse five at nine uh, twenty nine. Can you show like more like verses and tafsir or something like that? And what they base themselves. The Quran, on? chapter eight, as an example, verse number thirty nine says, "And fight them until there's no more 
turmoil and oppression or oppression and the religion all of it will become to Allah so here the Muslim they try to translate says like they, they add things is not there so in Arabic it says don't don't kill them so fight them until everybody convert to Islam but uh, they say about uh, Surah 9 that it's in the context of a war, you know? Well, Islam and, uh, Islam is a religion and at war with anyone is not a Muslim. Mm. Muslims, they believe that there's, there's a three lands. There's a land of peace. This is the land controlled by Sharia law. There's a land of war. This is land is not controlled by the Sharia law. And this is a, there's a land which is Muslim land, but it's not practicing Sharia law. This is the land of fitna. So the Muslim land, which is controlled by Muslims under Sharia law, this is the land of peace, which means Muslim will not kill Muslims. But a land which is not controlled by Sharia law, and it's uh, uh, still a Muslim land, it's called a fitna because this is their trouble there. There's no Sharia. So we have to fight those people who they are not practicing Sharia. And then there's the land which is refusing the Sharia law. This is the land of war. So uh, 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 the Muslim, they cannot deny that. They, they can say those things to someone who don't you know, know much about Islam uh, to deceive. Uh, 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 but for someone who knows Islam, they cannot, they cannot, you know. Like Muhammad, he says, I've been commanded to kill all mankind until they say there's no God but Allah and there's no prophet. But Muhammad, so and, yes. Yeah, so what? Well, he, he he's not fighting someone fighting him. He's fighting anyone, any people who don't believe in Allah, and any people who don't accept Islam as a religion. He's not fighting people who they are fighting him. He, he's fighting anyone. Doesn't matter who. Mm -hmm. I I've been commanded to kill. You see the word uqatil is to fight to kill, not to fight like by hand or debating them. No. And this is why it says, then their blood and their property only is going to be secured from my hand. Only. If they do what? If they convert to Islam, if they pay the jizya, or sorry, if they if they, they, they pay the, the zakat, if they pray, if they fast as we fast, if they eat as we eat, which means they have to follow every aspect of Islam. And for sure, the first thing to say Muhammad is a messenger, then and only then their blood and their property is secure from my hand, Muhammad said. And this is very authentic. As you see, this is Al-Bukhari and Muslims. Yes. And, uh, you know, that's, I wanted to know it because, you know, I'm uh, from, I don't know if you heard Bulgaria, it's right next to Turkey. And actually here- You are in, from uh, where? Uh, what What you say? You are from where? Bulgaria. It's, oh yeah, yeah I, was uh, in, I was in Bulgaria. I took a train from Romania and I went through Bulgaria all the way to Greece. Yeah. Oh, you liked it? Uh, I, I did not really, I, I stopped in a beach, it's called what? Uh, gold sand, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's, a close, uh, it's a close to the border of an area in Romania called Magnalia, something like that. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the border. And I like actually, I like the Bulgarian uh, coins. They have like uh, uh, Christian, yeah, yeah. Christian images, right? Yes. Yeah, actually, so, yes. I, yeah, I, I think I still have some. Yeah. So, yeah, but I did not really go in Bulgaria, uh, like to go around much, but uh, maybe one day I will I will be able to do so. Okay, why? You know, the, the Roman, uh, like not the Roman, I want to say, the, uh, here was Ottoman Empire, you know, and I know. Um, these days I uh, watched like a film, I, I know how to say it in Bulgarian, but I'm not sure in English, it's, I'm, my English is not the best, it's my third language, not like you, the second, and... Uh, uh, it's called like, uh, anyway, it, I, I'm not going to translate it. It's uh, a film about the, the, the Ottoman Empire and actually shows how they did, they converted everybody, you know, in the Rodops. That's uh, a piece of land like, uh, I forgot how to, like mountains, you know, mm -hmm. and over there, everybody is Muslim because they come and they, ki they, they kill you if you don't want to convert and they rape your women, exactly like Muhammad did, right. you know, so if you can show that to the Muslims that if you can show them even the history of the Ottomans they cannot reject it because that was those were real Muslims even today a lot of Turks they be proud with their history from the Ottomans you know yeah well this is why you know you have to be ready because the Turkish the Muslim Turkish not the Turkish they can invade your land again and Erdogan is preparing himself to do so 
as soon as European neighbors, they will be weak. The Turkish, they are preparing a massive army to invade their neighbors. So all of you, you might be occupied again because you are not preparing for what is coming. Uh, Bulgaria, Romania, many, you know, they are not really ready for any war, even though you are part of European Union. But as you know, Turkey invades Cyprus and nobody did anything, right? Turkey, yes. Tur Turkey already have, have more half of a Greece and nobody did anything. So who is going to stop Turkey from invading you again and taking your land and raping your women unless you are ready to fight? This is why having a strong army is the only way to bring peace to any land. Especially, right. especially if your neighbor is an evil person. Yes, and even that what you're saying is actually right. And even they're financing uh, mosques here in Bulgaria. I've seen, you know, the 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 Mufti here, uh, the Grand Mufti. Mm -hmm. He is actually making new mosques with the money from uh, from the from Turkey. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's it's scary. I'm trying to talk, get in touch with him so I can you know talk with him. That's why I'm learning Arabic from you. You know. Because mm -hmm. you have videos, uh, everybody, I advise If you, you want, you can challenge this Mufti, Grand Mufti, to come and debate me. So everybody will laugh at him. He English. So if I can do something, maybe translate between you and him. Yeah. And I have you know, a little little Mufti, you know, in my DM, so I'm going to talk with him too. And, you know, what more can you expect from a book that even ants can make it? So that's the Quran, you know. Yeah. Okay, have, have, a, have a good Well, night. if you Let's... want, if you want, if you ever... Uh, if Christians in Bulgaria would like, uh, we can do some special education for Bulgarian people so they can fight. Because as you said, they are trying to spread Islam in Bulgaria, building mosques. So we can train Christians how to defeat the cult of Muhammad and expose them. That's very good, my friend. Actually, you know what? Um, I started like, you know, talking to the people here because they don't know apologetics. You know? They don't know anything. Like you, you do apologetics. You mm. know the Bible. They don't know the Bible. They, they actually... I asked them about uh, Mark chapter 13, verse uh, 32, you know, mm -hmm. like Jesus is not the hour. And I asked the girl and she said that, you know what? Okay, Jesus is not God. And she was actually Christian. And people here are, you know, dumb. But I have my circle of people here that I'm trying to educate them through what you show. So, yes, we can do it for sure. I, I have a lot of people that are interested in, you know. Learning. Yeah, just let me know. And even if I have to come to Bulgaria, I will be happy to come. Perfect. And I will pay for everything from my pocket. May God bless him, man. For real. Okay. Yeah. Like they, they, they don't need to uh, uh, give me a hotel or any transportation or even the ticket. I would do it, uh, you know. No, here we, 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 Bulgarians, I don't know if you, know, you said you've been here, you know, but you know, I've never been, uh, you've not uh, been like uh, not much. So here, Bulgarian people are really hospitable. So don't worry, you know, you will get you something. Don't worry about it. Get me what? We will get you something. Don't worry. No hotel, no, no nothing, you know. People in Bulgaria are hospitable. That's what I'm trying to say, you know. Oh, no, no. Still, I, I don't like to stay in anybody's house. I, mean, I fart at night because I fart and I snore and I eat a lot. So <laughs> so I prefer to stay in a hotel. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. I'm just joking. But uh, yeah, I, I prefer to have my... Uh, uh, to to pay for my uh, my place, no problem. Yeah, let, just let me know if you can organize something with the churches or any Christian organization. I will be happy to come and help. I will take sure, don't worry. All right. Because I'm really excited about it because you know, like I'm the first time talk. Uh, it's my like second time talk to you because you know it's uh, people have to get get knowledge. You know, if you open Hosea four six, mm -hmm. it says you know the people the 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 Destroy. children. Of yeah. You know, they're done because of the lack of knowledge. Yes, so destroyed because of their ignorance, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, ignorance is, the, is, is, a, is a sign, you know, of, uh, of every nation this time. You know, I mean, the people, they have no idea what they are talking about. Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. this, this is why we are here. We are staying here every, uh, every day. How many hours I stay here? Five hours, six hours, seven hours, you know? I mean, I, st I stand up every day and my, uh, honest to God, my knees, you know, like the knee, my knee is hurting me from, uh, from like the, the way I sit uh and it's it's not healthy you know to stay looking at the computer having headset in your ears uh, you know like you guys you can you sit for okay you are relaxing you are listening drinking your tea you go to the bathroom you eat you can watch tv when you are listening to me i am a person stuck behind the table and i have to be always like alarmed alarmed to the chat alarmed to this he said she said 
it is a very very uh, let us say stressful uh, uh, work you do but the Lord he gave me ability and I don't feel really too much stress but it is not healthy let us say it's too much uh, sitting because you said you know you just you are stuck behind the table but anyway I will be happy to help just let me know how you can do it and somebody saying don't be don't, don't be careful you trust who I will tell you something I never trusted a, a place to go to and I, I fail I always my heart my heart tell me go there or don't go there and I follow it and I never fail That's all right follow God because even uh, you, you said your heart you know I understand what you mean by that but some people may misinterpret it you know it says to don't follow your heart in the Bible yeah this is the this is what we meant that the Lord he he gave us wisdom about what is right what's wrong all right. Well, thank you very much. Let me know if you have any good news. All right. Take care.